Welcome to our lecture online. Now let's calculate the power factor correction. How do we do that? Well, again, we have to realize that the goal is to reduce the current to the load by putting another capacitor in parallel to the original load circuit so that we can actually increase the impedance and therefore force a decrease in the current provided to the entire circuit, which means that we'll have the least amount of current provided and yet provide the correct amount of power to the load. So what we're going to do is, of course, the goal is to increase the power factor in order to reduce the current. And let's say that this is the original impedance to the circuit before we added the capacitor. It's simply going to be equal to R, the square root of R squared plus the, the inductive reactance squared, or we can write in this format the resistance plus J times the inductive reactance. So now what we're going to do is we're going to add the capacitor. What will the new impedance look like? So in order to calculate the final impedance, we're going to use the product over the sum method since the two circuits here, or the two branches are in parallel. So Z final is going to be equal to, that gives us R plus J X sub L multiplied times X sub C here. That's going to be a minus J X sub C all divided by the sum of the two, which would be R plus J X sub L. And that would be plus a minus, that would be minus J X sub C. All right, so working that out, we get impedance final is going to be multiply these two together, but J squared is a negative one, negates a negative here, that gives us X sub L times X sub C. That would be minus, when I multiply these two together, that would be J times R X sub C, all divided by, here we get R plus J times X sub L minus X sub C. All right, so now instead of leaving it in that form, we're going to take the magnitude of that. So we're going to take the magnitude of the impedance by using the same technique as we did over there, with the square root of the sum of the squares, or the square root of the sum of the square root of the sum of the individual component squared. So this is the real component squared, that's the imaginary component squared. So we can say that Z final is equal to the square root of X sub L X sub C squared, X sub L X sub C quantity squared, plus this quantity squared, and we can say plus because when we take a negative quantity and we square, we get a positive quantity, that would be R X sub C quantity squared, all divided by, we do the same in the denominator, that would be the square root of R squared plus the quantity X sub L minus X sub C quantity squared. All right, now the next thing we want to do is realize that we have an X sub C squared here, an X sub C squared that can actually come out of the, uh, that can come out of the radicals. So we have Z final is equal to X sub C times the square root of, well, I'm going to change the order. You'll see in just a moment why I'll write this one first. So we have R squared plus X sub L squared, all divided by the square root of R squared plus the difference of X sub L minus X sub C squared. All right, so why did we write it like that? Because notice that the quantity here, the square root of R squared plus X sub L squared, that's actually the initial impedance we had before we added the capacitor. So we can say that Z final is therefore equal to X sub C times Z initial, divided by the square root of R squared plus the quantity X sub L minus X sub C quantity squared. Now, to understand what we have here, notice this quantity right here. That will be a number that's either greater than one, equal to one, or smaller than one. If it's smaller than one, then Z final will be smaller than Z sub I. If it's equal to 1, then Z final will be equal to Z sub I. But if the quantity X sub C divided by the square root of R squared plus the difference of X sub L minus X sub C squared, if that quantity is larger than 1, then Z final will be greater than Z initial. And that's what the, that's what the goal was. We want to make the total impedance with the capacitor added to be greater than the initial impedance so that the input current would be smaller. And that's, of course, what we're after. We want a smaller input current by increasing the impedance. So we can therefore say that Z final will be greater than Z initial if 
and that's the coin, that's the key here, if x sub c divided by the square root of r squared plus x sub l minus x sub c quantity squared is greater than 1. And that's the key here. So we know that if we pick the correct capacitor relative to the inductor and the resistance here, if we pick the right value for the capacitor so that x sub c has the particular value that makes this fraction greater than 1, then we increase the impedance, and with an increased impedance we have a larger power factor and therefore less input current required to provide power to the load. And so that's what we're going to do then. We're going to calculate this quantity, verify that it's greater than 1. If it's greater than 1, we increase the power factor, we have a larger impedance, and therefore a smaller current requirement. And that's the goal of how we're going to correct the power factor, and um, that's how it's done.